A few months back, AMD released the Wraith cooler to replace their old 125 watt cooler design and packaged it with the FX8370 and the A107890K. Well, recently they decided to package it along with the FX8350 and the FX6350 and offered to send us one to check out. At first we were like, cool, a 3 year CPU with a new stock cooler. It was met with little fanfare. But in a quick search around the web netted plenty of comparisons to this cooler to the old stock cooler, but we already knew that it would be better than that, so we decided to put it up against the most popular air cooler ever, the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo, and just see how well or poorly it stacked up against the best known budget air cooler in the world. Well, I needed a board to test this with, so I ordered up an ASUS 970 Pro Gaming and we decided to ditch all the packaged thermal paste in favor of the Cooler Master Master Gel Nano in order to eliminate that variable. In order to test this out, we used the ROG Real Bench to crunch numbers and push the temperatures as high as possible at both stock and overclock. Yes, overclock settings. Now we managed to get a stable 4.6 GHz overclock at 1.428 volts. And feeling that that was a decent and achievable overclock, we left it there. And as far as the fan control, we left that in, t you know, in control of the motherboard and left the fan profile setting at standard. Now installation of the Wraith cooler was nearly brainless as all it takes are latching the clips and then clamping it down. The Hyper 212, however, was a bit more complicated requiring removal of the CPU cooler bracket, installing the cooler master bracket, and then fighting with the cooler's retention bracket to hold the Hyper 212 in place. Now I did take a video of that portion, but my memory card ran full and ran out of space, so that's not in this video. But before we take a look at the results, it's important to note that the ambient room temperature was 22 degrees Celsius. First off is stock. Running the Wraith cooler at stock, we had an idle noise reading of 36 decibels. And under full load, after 10 minutes, it reached a peak temperature of 43.6 degrees Celsius with a sound level of 41 decibels. Now it's time for the Hyper 212 Evo. Sitting at the same idle noise reading of 36 decibels, we cranked on it and saw up to maximum temperatures of 44.2 eight degrees Celsius with a lower sound level of 40 decibels. Next it's time to overclock. The FX8350 was pushed up to 4.6 gigahertz. Unheard of on typical stock cooling, it raised the sound level at idle to 38 decibels on the Wraith and when we put it under load we reached a peak temperature of 54.1 degrees Celsius with a noise level of 42 decibels. Only seeing an increase of one decibel was pretty impressive. Now the Hyper 212 Evo should be the clear winner here however. Coming in at a whisper quiet 36 decibels at idle, it was time to turn it up. Surprisingly only besting the Wraith cooler by less than 5 degrees Celsius and topping out at 49.9C and hitting just under the Wraith's noise level at 40 decibels, the same as its stock fan profile for the Hyper 212 Evo. Now in the end, it's clear that AMD has created something great with the Wraith cooler. Unfortunately, it's not something they seem to be willing to sell as a standalone item, but who knows what the future may hold. Now this has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. Feel free to subscribe and leave us a comment and we'll catch you in the next video.